any of those banks have a deficit or NPLs, then the bank, uh, this state of China, the budget of China, will make provisions for recapitalization of the banks. And they've been recapitalizing to the extent of $600 billion to, 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 uh, so far. The, uh, um, the question then is, India and China have managed to survive two major crises, according to me. One is the 1997 crisis of East Asia, which affected Russia and Mexico and so on. But it didn't affect India. It didn't affect China. And the reason that time was that we didn't have a run on foreign exchange because we had capital account non-convertibility. And capital account uh, convertibility is the main reason why uh, these countries, some of these countries had a problem. Now, let me tell you that in economics, there is something, in, in Christianity you have something called Holy Trinity. Uh, what? F uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, Holy Spirit or something, I'm sorry. Uh, um, um, I hope I'm not committing any blasphemy. Uh, but uh, uh, now, what is the thing is that there is something called a uh, holy un uh, unholy trinity in economics. And that unholy trinity, uh, whichever country had it, has had, uh, has had, had economic crisis. So one, if you were to ask me, can India and China have a economic uh, financial crisis? Well, let's see whether they have an unholy trinity. And uh, that means they will definitely have. Uh, now, most countries have gone off it, but East Asian countries had that problem. And Thailand particularly uh, had a severe, uh, a severe thing on, on that. Now, you see, uh, the unholy trinity is fixed exchange rate to capital account convertible. And three, liberal money supply. If you have these three, then what will happen is that uh, uh, you will have an economic crisis. Because what happens is, if you have a fixed exchange rate and the word is out, that is uh, undervalued, for example. Let's take the case of undervalued. Then what will happen is uh, hot money, hot money means portfolio that can come in quickly and go out quickly, will add, will come into the country and it will add to the money supply. Because once the uh, Foreign exchange comes into the country, it gets converted into local currency. Banks have to give uh, that currency. And then uh, this will, uh, th this will of course, excuse me, I would say money supply, which will then uh, lead to inflation. This will, of course, I can say uh, reserves. Reserves will grow, but reserves will mean Money supply will grow. Money supply grows means inflation. And inflation will fuel speculation, uh, fuel further speculation, it puts, uh, you know, uh, fuel the speculation. Oh, inflation, that means, uh, uh, the currency is going to uh, not revalue, it's going to devalue. Why does it go in here? They think, well, let's uh, bring the money in now and uh, then 
it will revalue, which means I'll get more currency, a foreign currency per yuan. Take China's case per yuan, and therefore I, then I'll make a profit. So this becomes a speculative money that comes in. It builds the reserves of the country, but then because you have to give local currency against it, it increases the money supply. Money supply increases inflation. And inflation may fuel speculation. If the inflation is moderate, then it will, uh, it will, uh, for other reasons, then it will.